Oh, that's beautiful. Well, if you're joining us online, we are soaking wet, but glad to be in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is blessing the North State with money in the form of rain, blessing us. All right, that's enough love, hush, shh. All right, good. You gotta love Christians, they know how to shush when it's time to shush. If you'd like to worship up front, come on up here up front. Be great to be with you. Paul Manwaring and Sue Manwaring are in the house with us as well. They're, we're excited they're here for this week with us. You have come to church on the second Mission Sunday uh, in a row, and Bill's going to be bringing the word, and we've got a couple of things for you to enjoy, but shh, the Lord loves the lost, brothers and sisters. He, he loves me and you, but again, he's like, I love you. I got 99 of you. I got to go get the one that's out there. And so, uh, again, we're going to be talking about missions where the Lord is, is, is using, uh, is, is, is upon us to go and find the one that is not home with him. And so, let's just turn our attention to the Holy Spirit and open our hearts to what God wants to say. Some of you are like, I don't think much about missions. I pray the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you. Like, I can't stop thinking about missions. Uh, that just is his passion that people would come home to him. So let's uh, pray together, then we're going to just have a little video, and we'll jump into worship. Turn your attention and your faith to the Lord, would you? King Jesus, you love the nations, and we love you, so we love the nations. <laughs> King Jesus, you love the nations, and we love you, so we love the nations. So we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would use your global church, and then you'd use us individually uh, to go and to reach those who have yet to come to faith, who have yet to see your goodness we think about the scripture that says you are uh, gracious, slow to anger, and rich in love. And you are gracious to those who are far off. And we say, use us to help bring them close, to help come into the family of God. Let your anointing just saturate everything we're doing today in people's homes as they are enjoying, or as they're kind of watching online. In this very room, we welcome your presence, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's enjoy this missions video, then we'll jump into worship. Lift up your voice. Let sounds of faith fill the air. Every word a seed of prayer sown into the ground. For the unreached ones and prodigal sons, the lost longing for the one who makes all things new. Lift up your voice. For he rides on your praise and your prayers. He rests on every wave. All of heaven awaits the adoption of every son and daughter. Lift up your voice. Pray that the few become the plenty of harvest hands. This is the call. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. For every nation under the sun, far and wide, every people, tribe, and tongue, like the dawn, your Savior comes. Lift up your voice.
up some praise to him. Just think for a moment. Just stop and think, what have you witnessed? What have you witnessed? And we'll go back and just sing that for a moment longer. But put on your heart what you've witnessed. Last Saturday night, I was sitting around a meal table. A young woman said to me, what's your favourite testimony? I told her the testimony of a woman who came forward here whose, whose niece was pregnant with a baby with hydrocephalus. I prayed for her, I said, name the baby. This is 18 years ago. This is the story I told. And I later, two years later, met the grandfather of the boy Judah who was born completely well. But, but this is what happened last Saturday night, sitting at a meal table, the grandfather who had not contacted me for well over two years, texted me out of the blue, a photograph of Judah's graduation. I've witnessed it. You've witnessed it. Let's sing it again. We've witnessed it. Let's just go back into this, but put on your heart what you've witnessed and refresh yourself. Remind yourself, I've witnessed it. I don't know about you, but if I, and I occasionally have a bad day, the best cure, the best cure is to tell my story to someone else. It just is, it just works every time, it just does. As you go through and remind yourself of what he's done. But there was a line in that song, I heard it first service, you've never left me without hope. I, I don't know what it does to you. He's never left us without hope. And the key to hope is perseverance. Because if you persevere, it's where the hope comes from. It says rejoice in your tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint. I want you to put your hand on the person next to you. And I want you to pray that they will have the spirit of perseverance. The spirit of perseverance out of which hope will come. Whatever their circumstance, begin to declare they're going to see it again and again. Again and again. They're going to see it again and again. You've witnessed it. Press into that person. Release boldness, perseverance, hope. Now lift your hands to heaven and ask for that same hope, that same perseverance, 
that same boldness to come on you. That God would do it again. That God would do it again. Lift up shouts of praise to Him. Tell Him He's worthy of all of it. I got stories I'll live to tell. Tell that person next to you, you've got stories you'll live to tell. He's worthy of all of it. We bless your name. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name. Amen. We'll just hug that person next to you. And try and resist telling them stories, but it's okay. You got a minute. And if you're already at your seat, just thank the Lord for our worship team as they leave. They've been phenomenal. Thank you guys. And if you are sitting next to a seat that is available, if you could raise your hand and indicate how many are available next to you. And for those of you who are in the room and still looking for a place to land, the hands up say, come sit next to me. That's really good. Uh, we also have uh, our great room as an overflow space if you are unable to find a seat here in the sanctuary. And if you're online, we welcome you. We're so glad that you joined us. You are a part of our house and our family, and we consider you an extension of this campus. So we're so glad that you're here this morning. You guys are doing great. There are three seats up front if anybody wants to come up front, several throughout the room. The next group I'd love to acknowledge is those who are here in our service for the very first time. If you're here for the first time, would you stand up? Stand up and let us welcome you. Oh, wow, look at that. Welcome, we're so glad that you're here. You are a gift to us. Uh, if you're seated next to them, would you put your hand on our guests and just, just, I want you to help me prophesy over them. Real quick, you're going to repeat after me, okay? Say to the first time guests, you're in for a treat. There's healing available with him. There's the prophetic available with him. And he brought you here to prophesy over you. You are in for a treat. We are very welcome to be, thank you for coming. And our ushers have some cards for you. At the end of the service in our South Lobby, uh, where I'm pointing, you can go and re receive more ministry from our team. We would really love to have you. And I have the awesome privilege of announcing a great 
night tonight. We have our monthly encounter night at 6 p.m. tonight. And I've had the privilege of um, leading a group of students in a choir. And so for the first time, I'll get to bring them to a Sunday night service, and we are going to have a good old gospel time in service. And I know that's right. I am celebrating. We were on the stage last night. I mean, the Holy Spirit crashed in. We were throwing shoes. So just come ready for a good time. A good time and a good party. And the, <laughs> yeah, Bill said, throwing shoes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it was the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and then also, we love the fact that God came as Jesus to start relationship with us. And so we're, 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 creating a space for those who are new in their relationship or those who want to shore it up. You want to go deeper with the Lord and what we're calling Fresh Start. It's a discipleship class every Sunday, started last Sunday um, in Mod 4. Come at nine o'clock for Coffee and Connection because it's about relationship. And then at 9.30, we start the teaching. So we invite you, if that's you, please join us. Online, there's a link for you as well to be a part of our discipleship training. So you'll find that in, as the moderator tap, types it in the chat. We love you guys and welcome to service. Here's church news. Hello, Bethel family. It is so good to see you. Here's this week's church news. It's time to save the date. If you are a member of Bethel Church, please make every effort to attend our annual business and vision meeting. It will happen on February the 15th Come in on. the College View Sanctuary. And we need everyone to attend. Otherwise, we cannot have an official meeting. So please join us so we can make quorum, so we can hear what Bethel has been up to and where we're heading. Yeah. Hello, Bethel Church. It is time to make your voice heard in the presidential primary elections. It is so vital if you're a U.S. citizen and is part of our responsibility and real privilege. And the deadline to register is February 20th and election day is March 5th. Super important. Do this. Come visit the nations at this year's Festival of Cultures happening on February 24th. Come on. Bring your family, bring your kids. It is such a fun experience as we experience different cultures, their food, different practices, clothing. It's such an incredible time to gather together as a church. You can buy your tickets now by finding this event on Bethel.com slash church news. Hey everyone, thank you so much for your investment in our Horizon Build campaign this year. We ended the year super strong and we look forward to your continued prayers and financial support. We've had so much support from all over the world. And for more information and to partner with us in Dr. Michael Maiden's prophetic word of 40 million by the summer, come on. We can do it. We are believing the Lord for yes. incredible breakthrough. Go to Bethel.com slash build. It's been so great to be with you. We hope you have a great week. We love you so much, and if you missed any of these announcements, be sure to find them at Bethel.com slash church news. Two places at once, I mean. Uh, hey, can I tell, give you a confession? I, I had spent two hours bawling my eyes out in third year under the presence of God as the Lord was touching all of us in the room. And then I came to do church announcements and I was like, oh, please, Lord, let my eyes not have that puffy glory glow. So um, there's a little bit of puff there, but here we go. It is offering time, hallelujah. And uh, we get to sow into what God is doing. I've been thinking about a quote that Bill Johnson has said before. Are you stand? why are you standing? I didn't ask you to stand yet, Steve. Okay, no, okay, Bill's with you. <laughs> I lost, I lost, Steve won. I was gonna get you to stand, fair enough, just in a minute, but you can, it's good for us, right, exercise. Um, I've been thinking of a quote from Bill Johnson who just usurped me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and he says, it is, it is just as foolish as it is to sow bread as it is to eat seed. And um, today we have the opportunity to sow seed. 
And uh, if, you, if you plant bread, it gets moldy. And if you eat seed, it's not very fun. And so today we get to give to God what, what He has given us. And we get to give back to Him and we get to sow seed. And we know that in seed has DNA for multiplication. And so today, if you just take out your offering gift in front of you, we are gonna read uh, offering reading number one. And we are going to believe by faith that as we sow seed, the Lord is gonna multiply because it is His intention that we would prosper because we believe in Him and we trust in Him, amen? So let's pull up offering reading number one. I could quote it for you if you want. Um, There we go, okay. Let's go. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interests and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, Expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just hold your gift up. Yeah, you can give a shout of praise for that. Let's hold our gift out. I I really just feel so much faith, Lord, that you want us to have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ, our living King, the Messiah resurrected from the dead, seated high above every name. Jesus, you have made every provision for us to co-labor with you, to partner with you, to see the reward of your suffering be fulfilled in your people. Lord, I thank you that you have called us to reach the lost, that you have called us to reach the nations. Lord, that you have called us to proclaim the gospel, Lord, beyond the four walls of this building, but into our city, into our state, into our nation and into the nations of the world. Lord God, I pray that right now as we sow, Lord, that we wouldn't sow in simple tradition, but we would sow with the breath of the Holy Spirit, knowing that where He breathes, He plants, and where He plants, He makes grow, and where He makes grow, He makes abundantly fruitful. So Jesus, today as we sow, we sow in the declaration that when the righteous prospers, the city rejoices. Lord, let the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God as we sow seed and see you multiply in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Oh, actually just joking. Yes, thank you, Dan. Uh, You will be seated in a second. This is our regular offering. We actually have the exciting opportunity to sow into missions in just a little bit. And so as you take your seat and the bags are passed, we're gonna watch a missions video. I honestly don't know where to start. Caminando por acá, lo vi, sentí como algo, sintiera una paz, pues me sentí tranquilo. Y bueno, el oro por mí, por las dolencias de mis piernas, y eh, me gusta practicar las artes marciales mixtas, y no podía ni siquiera alzar los pies, y hoy... salvation. So they found nothing in her blood. Everything was gone and she's cancer free. Prayed over him, prophesied over him, and he came to Jesus. So I prayed for him and he got healed. And the next morning she woke up and all the pain was gone. She said she physically felt the anxiety, depression just left her body. Because God fully restored the sight in her right eye. And his ankle was just completely just broken. 
and he could not walk. We could feel his ankles slowly moving into place. And I asked him if he wanted to stand up and take a step of faith. He stood to his feet and he took that first step. And then we got to walk all the way down the street and all the way back. Isn't that a stunning video? <laughs> Love that video. So that actually was a BSSM spring missions trip that included church members. Some of our local church members led that trip. It happened last year. It was beautiful. A beautiful picture of our whole body working together, going and serving at the same time. Welcome to Annual Mission Sunday Part 2. <laughs> I wanna make sure that y'all got one of these cards when you walked in this morning. If you didn't, our ushers are happy to give you one now if you wanna raise your hand and would like one of these cards. I also really want our online family to know that you can actually go online and you can download this card and actually most of the resources we've done, you can download because we want you to have it in your hands as well. And so uh, we're just, we're excited about what the Lord is doing. It's been a fun week this week. I want you to see on the back of this card is a list of all of our missionaries. We would love for you to pray through all of our missionaries throughout the year. And also at the bottom, there's a spot where you can just go before the Lord and see uh, what you feel he is asking you to be involved in throughout the upcoming year. The other prayer focus uh, for today is the 12 lost tribes. So you see the flags around the room here. And if you missed last week, I would really encourage you to go back and take a listen to the vision that we really felt God gave Bethel Missions just for our whole church body, that we would all partner together in prayer this year and go after praying for 12 specific unreached people groups. And so y'all, I have another testimony to share with you. And this, this is gonna blow your mind. So last Sunday night, in the children's service, uh, in the three to five-year-old class, uh, the teachers were talking about unreached people groups. <laughs> and they were telling the children how there are some people in the world who have not yet heard the name of Jesus. And the kids were just like praying for these people and they were drawing pictures for these people. And one of the children drew a picture of a shepherd and she said, the shepherd is really sad because he is still waiting for someone to come and tell him about Jesus. And then on the same picture, this child very clearly wrote out numbers horizontally and then vertically. And uh, later the teacher was studying this work of art and it just occurred to her that those numbers looked very much like coordinates geographic coordinates. So the teacher went and researched and put in those numbers for coordinates. And would you believe that it actually landed right on the spot, a tiny spot in Northern Nigeria, where the Hausa tribe lives. That's one of our 12 tribes. The Hausa people, they are a shepherding people. And so when you zoom in, you actually just see rural areas with marked off like fields where, where they keep their animals. Y'all, so this three-year-old, <laughs> three to five, she actually saw the shepherds and they were crying out and asking for people to come and tell them about Jesus. Come on. God is on the move. If you were here last week, Cindy shared the story of a resurrection. Yes. Same tribe. Yes. That's the flag of Nigeria right there. In fact, when we put the 12 tribes on a bookmark, we handed these out last week, but there's more at the tables if you didn't get one. 
the first tribe on the bookmark is the Hausa tribe. We, we didn't know, but God is on the move, amen? And, you know, last week Bill shared how 30 years ago when, when mission agencies and churches got together and began to pray into this, this geographic region called the 1040 window, that because of that focus in prayer, now all across that window, visions and dreams of the man in white are quite common. And what is God doing now? As we're leaning into praying for unreached people, he's giving us dreams and visions, words of knowledge. He's working in our kids. And so we're just excited. This is just extra encouragement, I think, to pray. Because when we pray, God moves. And we want to just remind you, we, we have this Encounter the Nations Gallery in East West Room. So if you didn't make it there last week, we encourage you after the service or before or after the service tonight uh, to go into the East West Gallery. There's a, a profile, uh, a display for each one of our tribes, as well as a beautiful interactive piece of art, augmented art experience. So make sure you go in there. So we're going after prayer together, and we all have a role in that, right? It's not just for the intercessors, we're all intercessors, amen? And today we're also going after giving. We are a generous church. Our offering at the end of the service will go towards our annual missions fund. And this is the fund where as a church, as a body, we get to collectively support our missionaries all over the world, our long-term missionaries. So it, it allows us, basically, when you give to general missions, you have a share in all of our missionaries who are out there on the field. You have a share in their testimonies as you pray and as you give for them. The General Missions Fund also allows us to mobilize and raise up new missionaries to go out. And last year, because of your generosity, uh, we were able to come behind four more new families who are ministering to the ends of the earth. And, and finally, the, the annual general... Uh, missions offering and the general missions fund allow us to get behind special needs that our missionaries have. Some of you might remember we helped fund the gospel truck in Thailand. Um, and we're leaning into a whole bunch of things this coming year. We, we want to go into these tribal areas, these 12 unreached people groups, and we want to do disciple trainings amongst near neighbor uh, groups where Christianity has gone. So there's lots of things that we're leaning into. It's all in our annual missions report which if you didn't get one, we handed them out last week. They're on the back tables. It's also available online for our online church family. So we're excited about the give. And then lastly, we're excited about the go of the gospel. Jesus said, go, didn't he? And we just sang it, to the nations will witness it. Amen. And so you saw the video here. That's spring missions in, in literally... Uh, less than six weeks, we're going to send about 1,400 of our body, our students, uh, local church leaders, staff, we're going to be sending them to the nations, 25 countries all across America, and it's just a, a mighty move coming out of our house. If I can have that next slide, in green, you're going to see where all of our teams are going in just 40 days, all across the world. And I know some of you are saying, I want to go too but I'm not in BSSM. Well, that's what the blue colors are for there. We actually, our teams have created 18 trips this year that are available for you to go on. If we can look at the next uh, list of the, where those trips go, I'm not gonna be able to list all of these, but you may wanna take a photo of this page. We are, we're creating trips that are uh, tailored for families. So if, if you've got a family, really of any age, consider El Salvador or Mexico. If you've got a family maybe with a little older kids, how about going on the El Camino de Santiago Trail in Spain, where thousands of pilgrims flood every summer, and they're hungry. And you can go and lead them to Jesus. Or how about a father-son trip to Alaska, a place that's near and dear to my heart, uh, to help build and help a youth camp for native Alaskans on the Yukon River? Or how about going with our most energetic uh, parking attendant on earth? How many of you love Sam? <laughs> <laughs> Sam and his wife are leading a team to Mozambique. There's many more. Would encourage you uh, 
take a snapshot of this. Also out at the missions table in Hebrews after the service, Joey Beeson, who oversees all of our Bethel Go trips, he'll be there to answer questions as well as a lot of our trip leaders of these trips. And we'd love you just to connect. It only takes about 10 minutes to apply for one of these trips. So if, if you're in doubt, apply. And, and number two, remember your passport. I think every Christian should know their, know their Bible and have a passport. Okay, so if you don't have one, apply and make sure if you do have one that it's current. All right? We're a church that prays into missions. We give generously and we go so that we might see the global expansion of his kingdom through his manifest presence. Isn't that awesome? And now I have the incredible privilege. Uh, welcome with me, Pastor Bill. Thanks, thanks, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Coordinates. That's another level of prophetic right there. Jeez, that's awesome. I was at the McDonald's drive thru this morning. Young lady behind me leaned on her horn and started mouthing some ugly things because I was taking too long to place my order. <clears throat> when I got to the first window, I paid for her order along with my own. The server must have told her what I had done because as we moved up, she leaned out her window, waved at me, and began mouthing, thank you, thank you, probably feeling embarrassed that I had responded to her rudeness with kindness. When I got to the second window, I showed the server both receipts and I took her food too. <laughs> now she has to go back to the end of the line and start all over again. <laughs> I know I shouldn't like that one, but I really do like that. I think that's so funny. One more. <laughs> this is a story about a married woman who decided to go on her own private vacation to Europe. She went from the Midwest to London, and then she was planning to go to Paris, Rome, and Vienna. When she got to London, she called her husband back home in the Midwest and said, how are you doing? Her husband said, I'm doing fine, but our cat Lucy died. So his wife starts bawling her eyes out on the phone. When she regains her composure, she says, you insensitive brute of a man. Why did I ever marry someone like you? You have no concern for my feelings. The husband said, well, what was I supposed to have said? The wife thinks for a moment. She says, well, when I got to London and I called you just as I did, you could have said, Lucy, our cat is on the roof. When I got to Paris, you could have said, Lucy, our cat fell off the roof. When I got to Rome, you could have said, Lucy's not doing well. When I got to Vienna, you could have said, Lucy died. Then the wife said, by the way, how's mom? The husband said, she's on the roof. <laughs> Probably shouldn't like that one either, but I do. I think that's so funny. We're going to receive an offering at the end, as mentioned. Uh, open your Bibles to Matthew 28. And we're going to actually look at some stuff we looked at last week, but I'm going to expand it a bit more today. And um, we'll do Acts chapter 1. Uh, actually, we've got several passages, but we'll do Matthew 28, Acts chapter 1. Uh, but let me just uh, clear up some stuff on this. I'd rather do this now uh, instead of at the end. First two services, I did it at the end. Didn't like it. So I'll try at the beginning. And if I don't like it this one, then the next service I'll do it in the middle. I, I have more chances to get this right. So um, this is our missions card. It's for you. Actually, sometimes we do pledge cards where you, you make a commitment to missions and then you put it in an offering bag. This one is actually for you to keep record of, of your mission support. What we're looking for, what I really want to see happen is for every single part uh, member of, of Bethel to support missions. I don't care if it's a dollar a month. What I want is I want it on your radar. If I can get it on your radar where we actually think nations, it actually affects our decisions daily. It actually starts moving into shaping priorities, shaping thoughts, ambitions, dreams, those kinds of things. 
And um, so we've got two uh, parts of our missions uh, fund. One is the general fund, which was already mentioned. That enables us to put on new missionaries or to address uh, maybe emergency needs, uh, opportunities that are unusual that just opened, and the team can make decisions to invest around the world. Uh, but secondly, we have uh, the individual missionaries that are on the list. I still have, I, I use this uh, every month. I still have my, uh, oh goodness, where did I put it? I still have the card that we put out a, a few years ago um, with the, all the list of the missionaries like are on here, but on a single card. And that's what I use every, every month. If I say, well, I want to invest in Tracy Evans or in Ronald and Heidi Baker or whoever, I, and then I can put the missions number, M for missionary, and then the number, that, that means the money's going to them. None of the money uh, ever goes to administrative costs or anything else. It's always 100% towards, uh, towards missions. We, uh, we, we take it onto ourselves to do all the administrative costs, et cetera. So that's, uh, that's available for you. Uh, there's a, uh, on here you can pray for a missionary and uh, a, a unreached people group. Put it on there. Keep it in your house so you just see it and just remember. Uh, put a pledge amount that you'd be willing to give every month. And then, uh, and then on the bottom it says consider going. And I, I do encourage you to, to do that. When, when we were in, in Weaverville, um, you know, it's a city of 3,500 people. The county is 18,000. Uh, you know, the real political upheaval came. I discovered early on where the nerve lied in that city. It was when somebody suggested we have a traffic light. <laughs> oh, my. You thought we were being invaded by the communists. <laughs> The second greatest turmoil was when McDonald's wanted to do something, and put a restaurant there. So, small town. <laughs> I, used to, I used to, you know, I'm one of them. I used to tease them saying, this is where elephants go to die. But then I would talk to them about our international responsibility. And see, if you think that it's a, it's a big church in a big city that has international responsibility, then you're thinking like Wall Street, not like Kingdom. Because in kingdom, one person in God is a majority. So I, I talked we, all the time about international responsibility. We had our weekly prayer meetings for 17 years, and we always prayed for nations. And it took a number of years for people to catch it, but we just didn't stop. I think the last year I was there, we, you know, we got like a couple hundred people in the church. And uh, last year I was there, we sent, I think it was about 150 of them out in missions. So it's, it's a huge part of life. You know, the way I figured, I said, not even the devil knows where Weaverville is. <laughs> we, we get to ambush him. You know, that, that was my philosophy. So, you know, nobody cared. So we just got to experiment and just go for it. So, all right, don't quote me on that, please. Don't quote me, don't quote me. All right, open your Bibles to Matthew uh, 28. We'll read a couple of uh, scriptures here. <clears throat> Verse 17, when they saw him, now this is when he resurrected, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. It's, it's an average church service right there. <laughs> Verse 18. <laughs> you guys are going to make me work hard, aren't you? I can tell, yeah. Jesus came and he spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Please Please uh, work to make uh, to recognize when heaven and earth are mentioned in the same phrase, because there was always intended to be a likeness, a similarity, an influence. They are not in opposition, not supposed to be in opposition to each other. One is supposed to influence the other, and that's the way it's always been designed. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. I remind you, Matthew chapter 10, Jesus commanded them to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, etc. 
It was never meant to decline. It was never, the miracle ministry was never meant to take a break. It was always intended to be the heart and soul of the gospel. And it's the responsibility of everyone who follows Jesus to learn it and impart it. The way that we uh, do things in the kingdom is we, we teach, we model, and we empower. We teach, we model, we empower. If it comes to healing or the prophetic or discipleship, anything that we do, you teach it. It's got to be declared first. Number two is you have to model it. You have to give the illustration. Number three, you have to give people opportunity to do it. So you, you teach, you model, and you empower. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1 brings us to the second passage that I want to uh, read uh, with, uh, to kick off this morning's uh, message. Acts chapter 1, starting with verse 4, being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart for, from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they asked him, excuse me, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons, which the father has put or fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth. You shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth. The issue of power and authority, these are not, uh, it's not like uh, you're buying a car and you have optional equipment. Power and authority is the engine of the car. I mean, you don't have a car without it. And the gospel, the essence of the gospel is literally carried out illustrated, demonstrated, imparted to people because there's authority, because there's power. What you notice in the Matthew passage is that authority was for the purpose of discipling nations. Power is for the purpose of transforming nations. And there is a difference. Discipleship has a direction. Um, Chris uh, Valentin just got back from the uh, Washington prayer, pr Presidential Prayer Breakfast. And uh, one of the speakers this year, I think the main speaker for the breakfast itself was the president of Rwanda. Rwanda is going through one of the most extraordinary reformations in all of history from when he inherited this position some years ago to have a million people slaughtered, innocently slaughtered in this uh, horrible stuff that was going on in the tribal wars, etc., in just a few months to go to a place where reconciliation started. They learned how to walk in forgiveness, and they are now building. So what do you do when you're building a nation? You have to build infrastructure that helps everyone to win, everyone to be successful. It involves education, medicine, it involves business, it involves church life. But it, there's, there's the wisdom involved to actually build structures that make room for the blessing of God and the work of God in families and in communities. This is the privilege of building a nation. And that's what this, uh, this man in, uh, in Rwanda is doing. I forgot his name, but, uh, but he's, he's uh, having profound effect on his country and surrounding nations. What is authority for? Authority is for that. Authority is for the purpose of discipling nations. Now, only a nation can disciple a nation. I can disciple an individual but it's our understanding of being a holy nation that positions us emotionally, mentally, and spiritually to be effective in the discipling process. It's in that posture of understanding we are actually a nation that is learning how to discover how God functions as he directs and empowers nations to become something. In that context, we have the capacity for discipling. First yes. Peter 2.9 says, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. There's not a lot of talk about it from me or most anybody I know about us actually having an identity as a nation, but that is who we are. And learning to think of ourselves as a people that are here as a nation of servants 
to bring out the best in all the surrounding nations. It's not a competitive thing. It's not you come serve us. It's the opposite. It's that we are empowered with insight, with grace, with spirit of God to come and empower and to train and teach and to release nations into their capacity, into their potential. Discipleship is about, is, is about uh, uh, being conformed, yeah. becoming like him. Luke says that a, a student, when he's fully trained, will be like his teacher. So the whole purpose of discipling is to raise up individuals, and then in this context, nations that are like Jesus. Yeah. It's not about getting people ready to go to heaven. Right. That's the end game, obviously. But there's supposed to be a way of life that is modeled in how I do family, how I do business, how I do politics, how I do education, how I do medicine. All these areas are supposed to come under the influence of people who function in authority, not for personal gain, but for the benefit of the whole, using divine wisdom to build something. Yes. And authority is unto that end. Authority is not optional equipment for us. Neither is power. Jesus came having been commissioned from the Father. 1 John 3, 8. The Son of Man was sent to destroy the works of the evil one. So Jesus came on assignment to destroy the works of the evil one. He came commissioned, but he didn't come with power. Now, as God, he has all power. I get that. And he never stopped being God. But he chose to live in, in, a, in a restricted way as the Son of Man dependent on the Father to show him what to do and the Spirit of God who rested upon him to enable him to do what he was assigned to do. He did so to model, to give us an example that could actually be followed. And so Jesus came with authority. Why? Because he said yes to the mission. Yes. The Father gave him a mission, destroy the works of the evil. And he came in the mission and came with authority. But he didn't come with power. He needed an encounter. Because authority comes in the commission, but power comes in the encounter. So Jesus comes commissioned with authority, but he went to be baptized by John. In that moment, the Spirit of God came upon him. It was after that you start seeing him walking in power. The point is, is that power transforms, discipleship builds. There's a lot of people that have personal transformation, but they don't know how to do life. Does that make sense? It does, it does to me. Let me, let, me trace you, let me think through this for a minute. Somebody's in tr transform. I, we've seen it. We've seen it so, countless times where this encounter with the almighty God, there's this incredible transformation of their life. All the addictions that they had, all the stuff that they had is broken off. But how many know when all the bad stuff is gone, you still have to build something? And discipleship is for the purpose of wisdom, uh, of building. Wisdom gives us access to the tools to build something that is long lasting. Power starts a revival, wisdom sustains it. And authority is what gives us access to the realm of wisdom that God has made available for us. <clears throat> In discipleship, all authority has been given to me, disciple, nations. In authority, we do. But in power, we become. He said, and you will be my witnesses. Good. As I heard stated recently. <laughs> in authority, we do. We function. We have specific assignments, expressions, because of the mantle of authority that we carry. But in power, we become. In other words, it's like the hands of a potter. The power of God comes upon a person to start shaping their life, their values, how they think, their ambitions, etc. These things are shaped in a person by a power encounter. And they are distinct. They overlap in, in nature, but they are distinct. I feel like, I missed this the first two services. I thought about it earlier today. I just feel like the Lord is, is like he's giving us an invitation for a baptism of fire. A fresh, fresh baptism individually, family, and corporate. 
that there's, there's something that's, that's in the air. It's been happening for a while, but there's something in the air about to equip and train and, and empower release people into different, different levels of expressions of the gospel. I, I have friends who they've been beaten, they've been imprisoned, they've been shot at, they've, been, they've had so many horrible things uh, happen to them in the preaching of the gospel. And every one of them that I know of will say they couldn't have endured without that specific encounter they had with the Lord that was an overwhelming power encounter. They point back to that and they say they never would have been able to make it. See, power is not just for the miracles. I believe in that, as you know. The, the, the destroying of cancer or the addictions or whatever it might be. We believe that and we pursue that. But one of the primary functions of power in the book of Acts is the ability to endure. It was this baptism of fire that made it to where they have no other option. They don't look at life as having multiple options. They have, look at life as, I've only got one option, it's to do whatever he says. And it's the baptism of fire that reduces the options. As you look through the book of Acts, uh, turn to chapter nine of Acts, if you would. As you look through the book of Acts, you see, um, you, this, you see this cycle in the first uh, eight chapters. When you, when you get to chapter 10, uh, you're somewhere around 10 years after the day of Pentecost. So we're, we're not looking at two weeks after Pentecost. <clears throat> and when you look, at, uh, you look at this cycle, what you have is you have an outpouring of the Spirit, and then you have added increase of souls, people added to the church, and then persecution. Then you have outpouring of the Spirit, people added to the kingdom, and then persecution. Outpouring of the Spirit, people added, then persecution. But something happened when Stephen was being killed. He was, he was a man described full of the Holy Spirit and full of wisdom. I, I really, he's one of the guys I admire most in the Bible because he wasn't one of the originals. But he rose up under their influence and came to such a place of prominence because of his tenderheartedness. He's like, here's, here's this, this lover of people, this lover of God. So here he's got extraordinary wisdom. He's filled with the spirit of God and he's being killed. And Saul of Tarsus is on the side and he's the, the ringleader of this murderous mob that is going to take out Christians. And he's been sent both by religious leaders and government to find these Christians that are causing such upheaval in, in communities. You know, upheaval, like getting people free of drugs and stuff. It's only upheaval if you're selling the drugs. <clears throat> so um, they sent Saul to, as the ringleader, and as they're killing Stephen, he looks up into heaven and he sees the heavens open. And then it says that he sees Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Man, standing at the right hand of the Father. Well, we know in Scripture it says that Jesus was seated at the right hand of the Father. But in this moment, he is standing to welcome the first martyr of the church. So Stephen is killed. But right before he dies, he prays. And he says, God, don't lay this to their account. In other words, God, forgive them. He prayed a similar prayer to what Jesus prayed. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. What's the point? Stephen targeted the people that were killing him to be places where God would visit in the future. Yeah. Individual that God would bring transformation to. Fast forward, next chapter, two chapters later, this Saul who is looking for more Christians to kill has an encounter with Jesus on the road. God, in his uh, kindness, knocks him off his donkey. He's the, the Holy Spirit, the gentleman, you've heard of him. <laughs> knocks him off his donkey. And he has this encounter with God. He's blind for several days, and it's a bizarre story, but he was born again. Saul, the biggest enemy of the church. So here's this enemy who was prayed for by a man who was dying. He was being, literally being killed in the moment. 
And if ever you've heard a sacrificial prayer, a prayer that costs something, instead of working to protect myself, to pray for me, for my family, my own personal safety, whatever, he put all that aside and he prayed for those who were killing him. And in the next scene, you see God visit one of those he prayed for. And Saul became the major influence in the New Testament of bringing the gospel to the nations of the world. Missions. It came out of that moment. Yes. Missions was birthed in that moment of prayer. God, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Wow. Both authority and power were focused on nations. Yeah. All authority has been given to me. Go disciple nations. Yeah. You'll be clothed with power and you'll take it to the uttermost parts of the earth. Both realms were to set us up, equip us to have impact on the course of history, literally influencing nations. And so here's this cycle of outpouring of the spirit, addition of souls and persecution, outpouring of the spirit, addition of souls, persecution. And now Saul gets saved. Chapter nine, verse 31. One of the coolest verses in the whole book of Acts. Verse 31 says, the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, Samaria, the places Jesus had prophesied about in Acts 1 verse 8, Judea, Galilee, Samaria had peace and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. Up until now, we have addition. But because power enabled endurance, Because power enabled endurance, you have the exponential increase because you've been faithful for a long period and now all of a sudden there's multiplication. Multiplication was set up because of people who had encounters with God and they walked in power. And the power, they saw the miracles, they saw the extraordinary things happen, but they also faced praying, I'm sure, for Stephen to be spared. Yes. If you and I are in that crowd and we know him, we're praying, God, spare him. And it didn't happen. And here's what happens. When you have your worst moment, if you handle it well, it becomes the back door to your greatest promotion. And so here we've got Stephen being martyred, the worst moment. And the next scene, the guy who's the ringleader gets saved. And all of a sudden, we've got church moving into multi multiplication. It's about, it's the harvest of souls. One of the most important things to learn in this, in this uh, role of, of being a follower of Jesus <clears throat> is that when I value what he values, he starts valuing what I value. What do you think it means when it says, seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added? It means just that. You take on what he values and you allow his values to shape you. When that takes place, then he's ready to listen to your values. You say, well, why doesn't he do that first? Because then he's building a self-centered person instead of a kingdom-oriented person that can be trusted with blessing. See, when blessing is the reward and not the pursuit, it, it it's, uh, solidifies the devotion to Christ. I didn't say that as good as I could have. When the blessing of the Lord is, is added to a life in a reward, it reinforces the devotion to Christ. But when the blessing of the Lord becomes the pursuit, then it creates a division of the heart. One of the things that has excited me the most in the last, I would, I would say, 10, 10 years has been the discovery, this may seem a little silly to you, but has been the discovery of the word proverb and what it means. It, it put together this many, many, many years a quest for divine wisdom it brought a missing piece to me that I never had, I never knew. Brian Simmons of the Passion Translation was sharing 
this concept with me that the word proverb actually comes from a word that means to reign or to rule. And that the essence of wisdom is to enable a person to rule over life, to reign. It's not reigning over people, it's reigning over life. It's that money doesn't control me, I control money. You can tell if you're controlled by money because money is what uh, forces you to make decisions. Oh, I can't afford this, I can't afford this, everything's based on money instead of you directing it to where you want it to go. So wisdom then was always designed to equip us to reign in life. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm fascinated by this invitation of the Lord to disciple nations. He, he didn't say your neighbor, which would have been good enough. He said nations, because that's how he thinks. That's how he thinks that we make decisions today that affects the course of history for nations. <clears throat> it's going to be interesting for all of us, exciting, fun, and terrifying all at the same time when we stand before the Lord and we see the effect of every dollar that was given, every word of kindness that we gave, every moment you stopped to visit a friend when it was inconvenient, and, and we'll see the ripple effect into eternity of all these various things. There won't be any part of your life that you won't be able to see the effect of hard decisions, easy decisions, and the impact it had on eternity. And I can tell you, I can, I can, only, I can only imagine that nothing else is gonna matter to me in that moment. Than, than that. It's going to be, what did I do with what I was given? And it's not a guilt thing into giving. It's, a, it's a living from eternity like right now. It's just living, thinking of eternal impact. And if nations has never been a, a part of uh, your thinking, then learn, you know, just pick one, you know, pick Japan. And then whenever you see it in the news, you know, just read the article or something. Yeah, do something to where it stands out to you. Pick some place on the earth. Pick one of these 12 tribes that you can just pray for. Maybe it's just once a week, but you, what you do is you, you just don't lose track with not only an invitation of the Lord for you personally, but your identity in a family that's been given an assignment. Those coordinates, is that the most extraordinary thing ever? <laughs> A three to five year old girl gets numbers and it takes you right to, I want to go find that shepherd. <laughs> where, where is he hiding? My goodness. That's just bizarre. But that's, that's the Lord. That, to me, that reaffirmed this entire two weeks right there for us as a family. It was his amen. Here, let me show you. I'll speak to a child. Ooh. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I think I'm done. <laughs> Pretty sure. Chris, why don't you come up and do what only you can do? You already? Yeah. You know, your part. Well, good morning. You guys are looking good. Thank you. Good job. I said this in first. Am I on? On? That on? That on? There we go. There we go. Hi. I said this in first service, but I've been with Bill 46 years. Still my favorite preacher. Uh, first service, I took like five pages of notes. I was like, amazing wisdom. I don't know where he gets it. Maybe, maybe God. I don't know. <laughs> it was brilliant. Um, I just wanted to share when we were, uh, last Sunday, 
we were in staff and we were talking about where we were going for the day and for the next two weeks in this whole uh, thrust for missions. And as we were interacting, I was remembering something that I, I felt, and it kind of turned into an activation. I, I was thinking about how many times I've been uh, to foreign countries, places like Africa, and I meet missionary, and I'm like, how, you know, what, what call, why, did you, why are you here? And the, the overarching answer has often been, when I was eight years old, I heard a missionary in our church. And, I, I, and, I, and uh, the Lord told me that I would be a missionary to Africa or to India or to, you know, some of these places. And I was thinking about how many times when we hear the call to missions, that it often catalyzes a divine destiny that you're not even aware of until someone plays that note and it resonates with you. And you're like, that is me. I, I am called. Now, I may, may not be long term, may not be forever, but you're, you, in, you resonate like something happens. Have you ever had someone just share something really simple with you and you break out in tears and you're like, I have no idea why I'm crying. I, the, like logically, I, this, does not, this is not emotionally moving to me, but something is connecting with my heart. And I am resonating with something that is, you know, it's like deep calls to deep. And uh, I felt this morning that uh, after John and Cindy shared and Bill shared, I felt that we were to actually acknowledge and commission folks who are having those kind of moments. Maybe you're a child in here, or maybe you're an elderly person here, or anything in between, but you're, you, you're hearing these voices, and you're like, I, I actually need to take a stand. I remember when I was a boy, I didn't remember it till this morning, actually, it's been a long time since I remember this, but when I was a little boy, uh, I was probably six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, in that age, where you do a lot of pretending, my pretending was with my sister, and we were always, I bought a helicopter, and we would fly to Africa and help the African people, poor people. And I, we played that for years. I'd never been to Africa. I had never, nobody, I'd never been exposed to a missionary. But, and now I'd probably been to Africa 15 times. I was served on Heidi Baker's board for eight years. Tr Tracy Evans, I love Tracy Evans. And we, you know, we, Kathy and I are big supporters of, uh, especially of African missions. And I felt like the Lord put that in my heart when I was a little boy. And then when I would hear, I met Tracy and then Heidi Baker, it's like something resonated with me, like I'm supposed to be a part of this. And I, I felt like if you're in the room or you're on our online campus and you feel like there's a call to missions in your heart, I want you to stand up and what we're going to do as a body is we're going to just commission you. It might be that you leave next week. It might be that you don't leave for 10 years. But I feel like it's important for you in front of your family to acknowledge, that's me. I, I, know, I know I'm supposed to go to missions. And I'm so thankful for all the people who fund missions. Uh, 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 we can't go without you. But there are just people that your life is supposed to be on a foreign land speaking to people about Jesus. And if that's you, would you stand? If you're on the online church, could you just text it in the chat? Like, that's me. And our, uh, our pastoral team on the chat will interact with you and do the same thing. And could you, now, those around you, can you just put your hand on their shoulder in some way just acknowledging a commissioning of these folks? And I'm gonna lead you in a prayer right now. I forgot to do the offering. I know. That's what I was trying to say. Father, we just right now, as a body, we just commission these sisters and brothers in Jesus' name to the mission, to the mission of changing and discipling and transforming nations. Lord, in Jesus' name, we, as they just stood in faith, we say, yes, we are with you. Yes, we agree with you. And yes, we pray for open doors for you in Jesus' name. That that thing that might have been on you since you were a child, or can I even say Jeremiah, in the, in the, in the case of Jeremiah, God said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I had already called you. And so we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You could sit down for just a moment. Yes. Thank you, Chris. I tell you, this is a holy moment. I don't know if you saw how many people just stood, but God, God is marking people. 
God's setting people apart to go to nations. And, and what a powerful, powerful word from uh, Pastor Bill today. Now's the time where we get to align not just our hearts, but our pocketbooks with God's heart for nations. And if our ushers would come now, uh, let's just lean into, I, I want you just to take a moment uh, just to ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to invest in, in this upcoming year, uh, into this annual missions offering? You know, for, for some of us, uh, we give a lump sum for the year. Most of us, it's a commitment, hey, I'm going to give this much every month, uh, a recurring amount. And you can set that up online. You can just make this commitment between you and the Lord to do it each month. Uh, but let's just take a moment right now uh, of silence and just asking the Lord what he would have us do, okay? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this incredible privilege that we have as your people to sow our seed into nations. Lord, to sow our prayers into nations, to sow our lives, to be your witnesses. Lord, we've, we've seen so much of what you've done in our midst, in our own lives, Lord. And you're calling us to our city, to our region, Lord, and, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And so, Lord, we just say you can, you can have it all. Lord, as, as we now pass the bags and we lay down our, our offerings to you, Lord, for missions, we just pray that you would multiply these gifts, God, that you would take our, our two loaves and five fishes, God, and you would multiply it for, for nations, Lord, that nations would come to the brightness of your rising because of the way that you're leading us to give today. So we bless this offering in the powerful, peerless name of you, Jesus, because it's your name that's above every name. We pray this in your name. Amen. All right. If you just stay where you are as our ushers uh, pass the offering, and then Libby's going to come and uh, close our time. Thanks, John. Will you join me in just thanking John and Cindy and the team for their leadership over these last two weeks? <laughs> Inviting us into the story of Jesus on the earth, in the nations. Bill and Chris, we're so grateful, Daniel Hart, for not just our nation of the United States of America being transformed, but we will not rest until we see the whole earth look like Jesus. I'm going to just take a moment as we're still passing the buckets around and partnering with the nations in our finances. And as we do that, I'm going to ask if you are on our ministry team, if you would make your way to the front right now while we are just wrapping up this offering time. If you're on our ministry team or you are one of our ministry school students and you have gone through the process to be on the ministry team, why don't you step forward right now? And as we do that, I'm going to invite our pastoral team to just come into the aisles. I have this sense in my spirit that God is going to continue to do some big work with us as a church family. The, as Bill was sharing, there's some of us who God is prompting us to release forgiveness over key people, over whether it's political leaders you've never met or it's someone within your own family and God is speaking to you and prompting to do business with the Lord and release forgiveness and release transformation. Many of us are, are, are standing as Chris gave a call to the nations and you're sensing the Father catalyze and, and recall you to go to the nations as mission. We want to partner with you. We want to pray for you. As you're watching online right now, Steve and Ruth Moore and John Taylor are going to take you into a moment of ministry and prayer. Would you just stand with me as we do that? Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing on the earth and we thank you that it starts with us. So whatever you're doing, whatever you ask of us as a church family, we stand right now and we say, yes, Jesus. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. If you are wanting ministry, you can make your way to the front right now. Our ministry team is going to be raising their hands if they are available. And I know we'll have Rich Smith on the aisles and Marlene Aronson, you can come here. And then we are going to be able to help direct you to some of our ministry team to receive from the Lord. If you are new, again, in the South Lobby, we have our info desk and we have some of our pastoral team and volunteers who would love to give you practical steps on how to get plugged into the local church. So if you are looking for practical information, South Lobby info desk is going to be the perfect place for you. Come on, so good, such a good word today. And Cindy and John are joining me here at the end. And what Bill, you know, this really is a mission house and we just love sowing in the nations. And I know many of you are joining us from around the nations and we're just so excited with God's doing around the world. But also if you're watching and you wanted, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you invited him in your heart today, I wanna encourage you, we have pastors on the chat. We have a link that you can click on to start here. We want to connect with you, pray with you, uh, and just believe for God just to do a great work in your life. But also just wanted to have the tailors on for them just to share their heart with you and just pray over you as well. And then we have some of our regional connection pastors too that are going to come on and pray in their native tongue and language. And for us, it really feels like a divine setup. Like I know like you can plan it out and you can have like the theme, but it really feels like a God theme for us. And just even that testimony you shared with that girl is just mind-blowing <laughs> what he's done. If you're like, what testimony are you talking about? Go back earlier at the beginning of service with John and, and Cindy and listen to the testimony. It's amazing. But could you just, just thank you so much for jumping on for our online community. Oh, but yeah. just share your heart and pray for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. What a privilege to be here. I tell you, to have two Sundays in a row as Mission Sundays, I've actually felt, like tangibly felt this connection with our online audience. We say online church family, like that is true. It really is true. And when I have stood up there the last couple of weeks and I see all the flags from around the world that are in the sanctuary, I just get super excited because I know this house represents so many nations. And I'm also excited because uh, all the resources, I think, I'm not sure about the bookmark, but I think almost all there's, of the resources. There's info created, on all of the tribes yeah, on the website. Like, yeah. But I want y'all to have it in your hands. That's what I mean. It's all available online. Including the coloring book for your kids. And print. <laughs> and yeah, kids and adults. The coloring book is awesome. <laughs> So uh, we, we really just want to invite you into this place where we can press in as a house for these unreached people groups. Yeah, yeah and I, I think, you know, as, as we think about you and you're literally scattered all over the earth, um, what, what we could do as a local church is, is huge, as we just heard from Bill. But multiply that out wherever you are, the city that you're in, the nation yes. that you're in. And if we really take this mantle of discipling nations, uh, I mean, there's just no limit. We can fulfill the Great Commission, I believe, in our lifetimes. Yeah. And so we just, we're, we're so grateful that you're a part of this house, uh, that you're uh, a part of our online church family. And, and this is for you as well. We just want to invite you in uh, to what God is stirring up here, invite you into intercession uh, over these 12 tribes. And, and really, these tribes are representative of the 7,000 unreached yeah. people groups that are still out there. So uh, God's going to highlight a tribe. He's going to highlight a nation to you, as Bill mentioned today. And uh, we just love to, to pray over you, uh, to really extend our blessing over you as, as a part of our church family by extension. Yes. Yes. Uh, so Jesus, we just thank you for every everyone that's tuning in right now, wherever they might be, whatever their nation in, is, God, that you would use them mightily, Lord, that this marking that's occurred this morning, Lord, that right now you would be marking people that are tuning in, uh, giving them a nation, giving them a people group, giving them a role, a specific role to play, raising up intercessors, raising up worshipers, Lord, raising up givers, uh, raising up goers uh, into the harvest. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing, Father. 
Amen. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Thank Thanks, you guys Steve. so much. And they can go to Bethel.com forward slash missions yes. if they want to find out more information. If you're wanting to know those links about the tribes, right. go on there. I saw some of you asking about the coloring book for their kids because yes. some of their kids feel called to missions. Just go on there. You'll find all that stuff there. You can download it there. And it'll be uh, amazing. We've even got... We have this encounter room where you can encounter these 12 nations. And obviously you can't go physically into there, but you can. We've, we've put the actual encounter art piece uh, online. So you can, you can find it there under a section about the 12 tribes. So join in with us and, uh, and help us uh, see these people come into the kingdom. And, and also you can share with us as God gives you words. As God gives you uh, prophetic dreams and visions. We'd love to hear those as well. Uh, we're in this together. Come on. Thanks so much. Thank you, Taylor, so much for jumping on. Thank We're not you. done yet. I still got more people to bring, but thank you guys so much for jumping on. They just wanted to come and just share their heart with them. I'm going to welcome up Deborah. Deborah is actually our, our Italian regional connection pastor. And so we wanted to bring it over. Uh, you know, part of the theme with missions is we wanted to show you kind of our international team yes. that wants to see the kingdom come in every tribe and tongue. And so I invited Deborah uh, to come up and we'll have another one, our Spanish regional connection pastor as well. But they wanted to just to share their heart for their uh, Italian and Spanish-speaking people and then also release a prayer in their native tongue over you as God is doing a great work in the mission field across the world. Yeah, amen. Um, I'm really honored to be here, and I have no words to the honor that I feel in my heart to be here. It's just, it's just incredible. And I want to bless everyone online looking at us and, and following us. And I want to release this prayer in Italian for all the people that can understand me and the, the one that cannot understand me. And I bless you in the name of Jesus. Grazie Gesù perché questo è un onore per essere qui in questa chiesa, in questo momento. E io ti ringrazio Signore per tutte le persone che stanno seguendo. Ti ringrazio Signore perché l'Italia, l'Italia sarà benedetta da questa chiesa, da queste traduzioni che sto facendo. L'Italia potrà gustare la tua parola in queste lingue signore grazie perché mi hai scelta come persona per portare la tua parola anche in Italia io benedico tutte le persone online che ci stanno seguendo e tutti gli italiani che stanno guardando questa eh, presentazione online adesso vi benedico nel nome di Gesù e dichiaro che la gloria di Gesù sarà su tutta l'Italia nel nome tuo Amen Amen. Come Thank on, you. Deborah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then I have the wonderful Elizabeth Bull coming up. She's our regional connection pastor for Spanish-speaking nations. And I just wanted her to come up and just share a little bit of her heart for anyone that is Spanish-speaking and then also just release a prayer of blessing. Elizabeth, thanks so much. Hi. Hi, everyone. And short message, we are believing that the greatest revival is coming from all the Spanish-speaking nations. Come on. We believe that we are carrying kingdom that never before, and we want to see heaven just invade every nation that speaks Spanish. So if you are living in one of them or you have a heart for them, just receive that word from Bill and from the Bible. We have received all authority in heaven and in earth. Come on. And there is time for power. I just want to share that. It's time for power and transformation for our nations to see God as he really is. Come so on. I just want to share a small prayer for you. And gracias Dios por lo que estás haciendo en todas las naciones de habla hispana. Gracias porque estás trayendo poder, libertad, discipulado, gloria y todo, Señor, todo aquello que tú has prometido en este tiempo, Señor, lo desatamos del cielo a la tierra y declaramos que veremos cosas que no hemos visto antes, Señor. Gracias porque cada persona trae transformación a su familia, a su ciudad, a su nación y al mundo entero, Señor. Gracias por todos. Amén. Come on, amen. Elizabeth, thank you so much. And I just want to pray over you. Father, we just thank you for what you're doing in the nations. And Father, I thank you for what you're doing in our online community, even right now. And Father, we thank you for a stirring and a momentum in Jesus' name. And obviously, we know you're all around the world. Uh, but if you do want to consider sowing into what God's doing here on the missionary, you can go to that link that was on the thread earlier before. Or you can even go on Bethel.com forward slash missions if you want to partner and give into the general fund. Or if you feel like, called to support a missionary, do it. But above all else, please support local missionaries from your local community. It's such an important thing to do that we are all sowing into what God's doing across the nations. And so we love you and bless you. And just to let you know, we have amazing things coming out 
in 2024 uh, 24 for more languages. We're actually developing a website right now that has multiple different languages, translations, so that way you can be resourced in your native language. So we love you guys and bless you so much, and we will see you tonight.